Last November, Canada and the U.S. announced that beginning this month, truck drivers crossing the border must be fully vaccinated or test and quarantine. But according to some industry voices, that could lead to major problems. With us now for that perspective, in Clinton, Ontario, Mike Millian, president of the Private Motor Truck Council of Canada. Hello, Mr. Millian. Good evening. Thanks for having me today. Thank you so much for being on the show. Um, what are the current rules for unvaccinated Canadian truck drivers and as of midnight tonight for you as drivers as well? Okay, so there's two rules. The first, the first one is coming into Canada. It's been in effect since last Saturday, January 15th. So any unvaccinated Canadian driver returning to Canada has to arrive with a PCR test um, within 72 hours, is allowed to deliver their load, and then they will have to quarantine for 14 days. An unvaccinated American driver will be turned around at the border and sent back. Effective midnight tonight, any non-American who is entering the U.S. by land who is unvaccinated will be turned around and sent back and will not be allowed entry into their country. What do these new rules mean for your industry? It's going to have a severe effect on our on our supply chain. We've, uh, there's 120,000 Canadian truck drivers who cross the U.S. border on a regular basis. Uh, there's 40,000 U.S. drivers who cross back and forth between the border on a regular basis. These drivers move roughly, there's $700 billion of trade that crosses our border every year, and roughly 70% of this is moved by trucks. According to a study that, that we just completed, um, that 70 trucking companies replied to, um, which accounted for 13,600 drivers, 25% of the drivers are unvaccinated on, on that survey that we did. So if we look at a 20% on the unvaccinated rate, giving uh, room for error, we're looking at removing a fifth of that workforce, and that's just Canadian drivers. Uh, on the U.S. side, we're looking at roughly a 40% unvaccinated rate. So we're looking at even removing more drivers. So you remove a fifth to a quarter of the workforce that brings our groceries over, our, our, our produce, our fruits, our vegetables, our meats, our fuel, all our essential goods, you remove that capacity, uh, it's going to cause serious problems. We're going to go uh, over that those numbers that you mentioned in just a moment. Um, you know, a lot of people have said that, I think, I guess one of the uh, defenses that the government is using is that your industry has known about this for a while, that these changes uh, were coming. Um, so do you feel uh, taken aback or do you feel like you weren't, you need more time? Yeah, that that statement by the government is, is a little concerning to us. Um, the industry hasn't known about these rules for a long period of time. The, the Canadian government announced on November 19th that if people wanted to cross the border, they were going to have to be fully vaccinated by January 15th. That is a period of roughly eight weeks. So if you have any drivers who were hesitant to get the vaccine for one reason or another, and then decided they were going to get vaccinated to keep their job, you have not provided them enough time for when you made that announcement. If we look at the timelines, it takes you roughly six weeks if everything works perfect for you to become fully vaccinated. You, you have to make your appointment for your first, first shot. Then it's a four-week delay before you can get your second shot. And then you have to wait 14 days after that before you're considered fully vaccinated. So that's a minimum of six weeks. Uh, and these drivers are on the road in a lot of cases, so they're gone a week or two at a time. And and I think we all know there's been periods of times in here, especially in uh, December, when some people were booking appointments and they were booking them two months out. So to say that eight weeks notice was a sufficient amount of time to allow drivers to become fully vaccinated that had changed their mind to become fully vaccinated, that's simply not true. We, we have been asking for a delay for at least three months for quite some time and and just it, it fell on deaf ears and unfortunately we didn't receive one how would you describe the morale in your industry right now uh it's tough there, there's a lot of people that are affected by this like i said you have a lot of people that are that are going to be out of jobs and you're looking at the, the trucking industry as a whole who since march of 2020 has been considered considered essential workers and have been moving goods back and forth across the border. 
Uh, you know, we went from March of 2020, where I think everybody in the industry found out what it is that drivers do, and the drivers felt they were getting the respect that they hadn't been given for quite some period of time. So they were thought of as heroes. When we were all asked to stay home, quarantine in place, reduce contacts, long before vaccines were around, truck drivers were asked to continue to do their job and did continue to do their job to make sure we could get medical supplies, oxygen, blood, uh, food, fuel, <clears throat> excuse me, all the other items that we need. Drivers have been doing this for 22 months. When our borders were closed in March of 2020 to everybody, except essential travelers, truck drivers continued to go back and forth across the border. So the fact that they feel they sacrificed and now they're being told, um, you're out of work and unless you get this vaccine when they were doing the job before vaccines were around uh, it, it's some of them are pretty upset about it do you think that um the public is uh, a bit to blame in this conversation because as you mentioned you were considered to be um heroes at one point during this pandemic and for us when we go to our grocery stores and if something is missing maybe that's when we realize that something is going on but we're not able to make, uh, we're not able to connect the dots. Do you think a part of this has to do with the public, the general public just, you know, kind of taking uh, for granted what you all do? I, I never want to blame the public. I, I think we all take things for granted that is just always there for us. I think that's human nature. Um, you know, before the pandemic hit, we used to joke in the, in the, in the industry, uh, trucking part of it, as well as the entire supply chain. Uh, we all did our jobs too well. We, we, everybody in the supply chain did their jobs so well that shells were always stocked and everything you needed was there. And when everything you need is always there, it, it is going to be taken for granted because you don't have to worry about it. When COVID hit, the supply chain started to fracture, not just from the trucking end, but the entire supply chain, rain, uh, rail, marine, air, trying to get the components made and, and into the, the boats and shipped across the whole su entire supply chain started to fracture. And then when people realized the role that truck drivers take in it, they are the first and last mile of every delivery. doesn't matter if it comes by a train or a boat um, or a plane, the truck has to get it from that facility inland or get it from inland to that facility. So you are the first and last mile. So I don't think I'd, I'd blame the public. It's just industry has always stepped forward and done its job. And when you do that, people do tend to, to take it for granted. We talked a little bit about the supply chain. Um, with these new rules, how will the unvaccinated trucker situation affect our supply chains? Well, you know, as I mentioned before, when you remove a f up to a quarter of the workforce, so a quarter to a fifth, you know, we're talking 160,000 drivers. Um, you know, we're looking at removing anywhere between 30 to 40,000 of that from the workforce. Uh, if you do that, you cannot help that have dire consequences on your supply chain. So what we're going to see within a week or two, in, in my opinion, we are going to see two things that this is going to affect. We're going to see shortages uh, at our grocery stores uh, and other places where we get our essential supplies and needs. And we're going to see more inflation. And we know how bad inflation already is. Uh, you know, a report came out the other day, inflation's at 4.8%. It's the highest it's been since 1991. When you remove, shrink the capacity, the way we're shrinking it, and remove this many drivers from the capacity, those that are bidding to get trucks to pick up their freight are gonna have less capacity to reach out to. So if you're lucky enough to get a truck to move your freight, you're gonna have to pay more to get that truck to bring it across. You know, it's simple supply and demand economics. Um, so as shipping costs go up, the shippers can't afford to absorb that they are going to have to pass that along to the consumer. And we're also going to see more increase in prices at, at our fuel pumps and our grocery stores and, and anywhere else where we get our items. Um, about two thirds of the goods moved between Canada and the US for ship by truck. And the survey that you mentioned earlier, I wanted to go through some of the numbers. Uh, this survey was conducted by your organization, Private Motor Truck Council of Canada. It ran for two days uh, between January 17th and 19th. Um, it's not a scientific sample, but it can give us an idea of where your members are at. Um, according to the survey, here at home, 
There are about 120,000 truck drivers in Canada. Approximately 75% of Canadian drivers are vaccinated. Around 30,084 of Canadian drivers are not vaccinated. As for the situation uh, south of the border, there are about 40,000 cross cross-border American drivers. Approximately 55% of American drivers are vaccinated, and around 18,000 of these American drivers are not vaccinated. You know, um, I think there are uh, people who are watching this and listening to this, and they're wondering, why not just get vaccinated? Well, and, and let me be clear, our, our association, our, our membership, uh, we are in favor of vaccines. Uh, we, we, we believe when the scientists tell us it's, it's what we need to do to get out of this. Um, no, I'll be honest, I'm fully vaccinated, my family's fully vaccinated. So it's not that we're against vaccines. What we are against is mandates that are putting people out of work in an industry where the very nature of the job of a truck driver is working in isolation. A truck driver spends the majority of the day in a cab of a truck by themselves. They don't interact with, with other people on a regular basis. When they pick up and deliver at the shipper and receiver's premises, the industry, the supply chain has put protocols in place back when the pandemic first hit to reduce contacts. Most of the paperwork is exchanged electronically or hand through a, uh, a slot in the door. Uh, you know, we've had ex um, enhanced cleaning measures uh, in, the, in the vehicles themselves. Um, so all these measures have reduced the re risk of spread from the trucking industry. And we've had no major outbreaks associated with the industry. So I understand where people might say, get vaccinated and hey, would we love to see more people vaccinated? Sure we would. But, but the fact is no matter how hard any of us push, 100% compliance is never gonna happen. And we have an industry that we already had an 8% um, um, sorry, 8% of jobs not filled 23,000 vacancies existed at the end of the third quarter. Um, so we've already got a shortage and we already have supply chain issues and removing people from these supply chain jobs, uh, we just don't feel is the best way to do it. So we, we certainly encourage people to get vaccinated. We just don't believe making this decision in a silo is in the best interest of, uh, of our society, to be honest with you. Um, you know, we make it. We know the decisions are made to try and increase public health and protect our health and safety. We know that's why the government's doing this, and, and we appreciate that. But my fear is we look at stuff in a silo too much. So we're worried about looking at the effects on public health and safety on this side. But how seriously are we looking at the fact that if we remove 20 to 25 percent of the workforce and we have shortages of our essential needs, um, how much is that going to affect? public's health and safety. So a decision on one side has repercussions on the other side. And I, I hope I'm wrong, but I'm afraid we're going to see serious repercussions on the other side. You mentioned that truck drivers um, tend to spend uh, t a lot of time by their by themselves. Um, have there been uh, COVID outbreaks within the trucking industry that you know of? Well, the trucking industry is part of the general public. So, I mean, sure, we've had some, we've had some outbreaks, but none of them that we have found have been contributed uh, to their jobs. You know, there, there was an outbreak um, back, let's say, in the fall um, in the Peel region, but most of that was involved in community spread. So um, a lot of it is occurring when the drivers are perhaps outside their, their workplace. Um, you know, they still, they still have lives like the rest of us do. And I think when they're on the job and they're working, like a lot of us, they're more hyper-protective and sometimes the guard gets let down a little bit when you're at home. So I, I'm not going to say that there's been zero cases attributed to the trucking industry because that would, that would be a lie. But there hasn't been any large outbreaks attributed to the work that the drivers are doing when it comes to their job. Well, looking forward, because the situation as it stands, um, you are concerned that there are going to be unintended consequences. What is the solution then to the lack of drivers if encouraging vaccines isn't getting the response you'd like? Well, I mean, ultimately, and, and both countries have made their decisions now, but ultimately we're, we're, we're hopeful that, that we could see decisions made to push this back if we see serious repercussions on the supply chain. Uh, long term as an industry, we, we need to get more people interested in, in this profession. Uh, and so long term, we need to 
you know, get, get reach out to our youth, reach reach out to schools, get involved, um, and make this job top of mind to people when they're younger. Make it top of mind to parents when they're younger. Uh, you know, we have a truck driving shortage. We also have mechanic shortages. We also have IT jobs within the industry, uh, safety and risk specialists. There's all sorts of opportunities within this industry that we have shortages for, and people. You know, we need to do a better job of making them aware of all the opportunities within the industry. Uh, you want to be a driver, um, you can get into it relatively quickly and make, you know, a good living right off the bat. And if you want to stay as a driver, you're more than welcome to do that. Or there's opportunities to to move up through it. So long term, we need to do a, a better job of, of getting people interested in our industry. And, you know, I think we seriously need to look at, at pay structures down the road too. You know, we, we, we need to transition more into a, a pay by the hour industry as opposed to, you know, pay by mile where drivers may be getting punished if they're stuck in a traffic jam or other things and they can't help it. Like there's a whole bunch of things we need to look at, but I've been in this industry for uh, the 32 years now. Had to do some math in my head. Started out as a driver and moved up through. I, I believe in this industry. It's a good opportunity. I believe there's lots of challenges or lots of opportunities within it. But as an industry, we need to do a better job of getting that out there. Um, you know, um, Canadians have been sharing different images online of the rising costs in the grocery store, uh, empty shelves. You mentioned uh, inflation at a 30-year record high. Um, your industry, of course, helps stock those shelves. When do you see the effects of this mandate appearing on, uh, you know, on not having enough goods um, on the shelves? When do you see the I impact think, of this mandate? Yeah, in some instances, I think we're going to see it very short. Uh, you know, we're almost a week into the Canadian mandate now, and I, I think we're going to start to see it in the next week or so. Um, especially when it comes to items like produce, fresh fruits, and vegetables. Uh, this time of year, the majority of our fresh fruits, fruits and vegetables are coming from south of the border, and the majority of them are being transported by truck. Uh, so I believe in areas like that, there's a lot of meat moved across uh, across the border. In areas like that, I think we're going to see it very, very quickly. Um, I have seen posts online already from people showing empty shelves at their grocery stores in the produce and meat sections. Um, I, I, I don't believe that's because of the border mandate yet. Um, I could be wrong. Um, but I mean, I saw these posts within two, three days, and I don't think it would affect quite that quickly. I think we had people panic buying, um, which led to increased traffic and, and pulling these products down. And then we had some severe winter weather on the uh, on the East Coast on the weekend, as well as in Ontario and Quebec that likely attributed to some of these challenges. But I think we're going to see it very quickly when, when it comes to produce and meat. And uh, so we affected with this is is going to be decreased supply and options and increased pricing. We've been hearing of a trucking convoy making its way to Ottawa uh, in protest of uh, these new rules. Can you tell us anything about that? I, I don't know much about it other than what everybody else has seen. It's uh, We're not involved with organizing it. Uh, this is, for the most part, a driver-led uh, organization and, and protest. Um, our messaging is, I we believe in people's rights to peacefully protest. That's what makes this country such a great place to live. What we do encourage is people that are involved in this protest and trying to get their, their voices heard and help get the message out there. Be respectful, be polite, get the messaging out appropriately, and do not interfere with people's safety when it comes to the highway. We don't want live lanes of traffic blocked. We don't want live lanes of traffic slowed down. Uh, we don't want accidents caused by this and people's safety affected. So again, be be respectful, um, be polite, uh, protest and get your message out, but do it in the right way and do it safely. Uh, thank you so much for your time. We really do appreciate your insights and uh, thank you for everybody in your, in your industry for uh, helping to keep everything moving these past two years. We really do appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Have a good night. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is made possible through generous philanthropic contributions from viewers like you. Thank you for supporting TVO's journalism.